Hello there, how are you doing? Hope you are all doing well. As you can see, I am still at home. Uh, will be potentially for a few more weeks at least. Uh, I think most of the world now is indeed in lockdown, which is, uh, you find interesting way to start try and spend the time. Obviously, I am listening to a lot of records. Thank you for all the feedback that people sent in from last week's video, uh, asking quite a lot about the records, more than what I was talking about, and have asked me to make you mention a few records in the course of this video, which I may well. Let's see how that goes. Now, apologies if there is background noise during the course of the video. For some reason, various people choose things to do while they're stuck at home. My neighbours have decided to renovate their entire apartment. So if you hear hammering, banging, the occasional swear word where I presume someone is banging their, their hammer into their thumb, then I apologise. I will try and edit it out and post. I believe that's what video producers say, though I am by no means a video producer. Now this video is a bit earlier than usual. I normally do them on a Thursday or a Friday, but this one's more towards the beginning of the week for a couple of reasons. First one is it's an Easter holiday coming up for those who celebrate, so we have a few days off here in Hong Kong uh, to spend time presumably indoors, <laughs> maybe watching Easter related movies of which I don't really know very many of them actually. If anyone's got any suggestions do let me know. Uh, but also because I think the topic I'm going to talk about, which follows on a little bit from last week, is quite an urgent one. So I'm talking about cybersecurity in the time of coronavirus and how a lot of our best practices perhaps are going out of the window. Now, you will remember if you've had been on social media at all in the last few decades, I suppose, when you have a new fad, something very exciting, some new software, some new apps, some, some new plugin, some new quiz or survey appears on social media, everyone jumps on the bandwagon and so they realise there's a problem. Similarly, when a new company arrives, DNA testing is a good example of this, everyone thinks, oh fantastic, I can find out where my DNA comes from, I'll find out who my ancestors were, I'll send my DNA off to a company, but I wrote, won't read the terms and conditions, and then I'll discover that actually now my DNA belongs to them, and although the DNA test was free or very cheap, they're probably going to sell it on for some sort of research purposes. Not necessarily to clone you, just to let you know, although who knows in these crazy times what could happen, but at least it's something that's valuable to them. It's the value of data, and I know I've spoken before about people not necessarily realising how valuable their data is. Now, during the current COVID-19 coronavirus crisis, there is one company that has probably been on everyone's lips and has done incredibly well. And I'm sure you know who I'm going to talk about. It is, of course, Zoom. And it's been an awful week for Zoom, certainly a bad weekend. Uh, it's been massively used. I mean, I think it, its user base went from 2 million to 10 million. It's probably more now. Don't quote me on the figures because I don't have them in front of me. And everyone's using it. People are hosting house parties. Instead of going out to a bar or restaurant, they're sitting in front of their webcam on Zoom. Teams are hosting it to have team meetings. People are conducting discussions over it in terms of important business deals. Even in the UK, the Prime Minister has been on Zoom meetings with his cabinet talking about well, I presume the UK's response to the coronavirus or maybe how Boris Johnson is doing because I know he's not been well with coronavirus himself. Who can tell? But we found in the last week security experts have been saying, well, Zoom is not as secure as you would like. In fact, it's not even as secure as would pass the bare minimums to satisfy some of the data protection laws. This is a worry. Now, you'll heard of Zoom bombing. I suppose if this hammering starts up, I could say that I've been essentially Zoom bombed in this video, which is where someone can get hold of the URL and the password for a Zoom meeting, which aren't really that difficult to get hold of, I'll be perfectly honest, and then join a meeting and start doing whatever nasty things they want to do, profanities, pornography, you name it, just disrupt the meeting as best they can. Or I suppose they could listen in and see what's interesting about whatever internal meeting somebody's having an organisation where they're using Zoom. So that's one issue. The also, other problem with Zoom is the encryption doesn't seem to be up to scratch. And then recently there was a story in the FT that some of the communications were passing basically through Chinese data centres that are owned by Zoom and run by Zoom there. This is a problem on so many levels. Now, I don't just want to pick on Zoom because this applies to anything you're doing online or any technical work you're doing where there may be a cybersecurity risk during this time. But don't think because we're all working from home don't think because the world seems to come to a standstill in some ways that this means that data privacy no longer applies or that cybersecurity is no longer a risk or that laws such as the GDPR, which impose, remember this, massive, massive fines if you somehow misuse, leak, lose, do something terrible with someone's personal data are still in effect. It doesn't mean that they've gone away. 
So I'll give you an example. If you're discussing in a, Zoom, a HR Zoom meeting or a customer Zoom meeting, discussing individuals, people who you have personal data on, and either that gets stolen, there's a Zoom bombing and somebody manages to take something from there, unlikely, or even the fact that it may have passed gone out of the EU, out of your jurisdiction and through Chinese servers would be a breach of the GDPR. Zoom themselves, arguably, if this is all true, I mean, we'll wait and see what happens, they too could be in breach of the GDPR. It is a massive, massive risk. So be careful, look at what technology you're using. Think about, is it actually something that is secure? Don't just jump on the next bang bug and don't just go, well, this seems okay, everyone else is using it, so it must be fine. If your boss is saying, right, we're doing everything on Zoom now, we're going to discuss, I know, I'm making this up, our trade secret meeting with all of our most important IP in a Zoom meeting, question them, think, well, maybe is this secure? There are lots of alternatives out there, all with their pros and cons. Some are more secure than others. I know Microsoft Teams is being called out. Microsoft Teams does seem a little bit more accountable than Zoom at the moment, but again, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how, how things go on. The other thing I want to mention is cyber criminals, those who take advantage of poor cyber security, who want to essentially rip you off. Something like this, a crisis like the coronavirus is a dream. Now, depending on your organization, you may have good, competent IT. Your IT may be lacking investment. There may be challenges with it. You may have found that if, particularly if you've had a tight time before the coronavirus, if money's been, been scarce, that people haven't spent that much on the security and the technology you have in place. So I've, I've spoken to people, spoken to clients, spoken to friends with a wide range of experiences. Some have fantastic work laptops. Everything's run through a VPN. Security is fine. The things are fast. You can get documents easily. Everything will happen in this closed environment and security is very tight and that's very good. Others are like, well, Actually, now we're having to use things like Dropbox. We're using uh, Microsoft Office 365. Uh, we're using Zoom for our meetings where we can. Uh, it's very difficult to actually access things and we don't really know what to do. We're just making the best of a bad situation. And that is admirable. But if you are a cyber criminal, if you're hoping to do something nefarious, that is fantastic because there are so many holes, so many loops in which you can catch someone. If people cannot use their work email very well and start to use their personal email, suppose that email is on something like LinkedIn along, and suppose they've answered a loads of security questions uh, accidentally by posting on Facebook what their favorite color is, the name of their dog, their mother's maiden name, uh, where they first fell in love and where they grew up. It's not that difficult for someone, let's face it, hackers have even more time than usual now, to piece together that information and compromise you. So it is a real risk. And I've seen more people complaining about potential invoice frauds, uh, spoofing, essentially where someone impersonates a company or accesses a company system to send emails suggesting, please, can you send money, invoices, data to this address? I've also seen CEOs, senior people within organizations, uh, emails purporting to come from them coming from going, basically going to a PA or going to someone to IT saying, can you please send me this or give me access to this? And sometimes, yes, it might be, it might be true. Maybe they are using a, a Gmail account. Uh, maybe they've just got a problem somewhere. But unless you carry out some significant checks, for goodness sake, just phone the person if you're not sure. I mean, that's the best way to make sure that things are okay. Um, but if you're not carrying out checks, it's easy to accidentally send data to the wrong person, money to the wrong person. And the invoice fraud that I mentioned is where you essentially have a fake invoice, a fake account saying, please send all of this cash. And it can sometimes be millions to this account rather than doing it to our normal account. And then you find out after you've sent the money that lo and behold, it is actually account hold by some cyber criminal and you've just been ripped off. Now, we see those a lot day to day. There's certainly a period in Hong Kong where we're getting a few of them every month uh, and people do still fall for it. And there's no fault with that. The problem now is that so many things are closed down. The police are already quite busy trying to make sure that people aren't obeying social distancing rules. The banks are suffering massive volumes of calls. Most of the branches might not be open. That if you do suffer a breach, it's going to be a lot harder to take quick act get that money back. Now, we, like many law firms, offer a cyber breach hotline. And I can put a link to it in this video if you want to. Uh, so do most cybersecurity professional firms, forensic firms as well. You can call them. But again, 
we can do so much, but if the institutions that we need to deal with to try and freeze, get back or stop that uh, the money going or stop that attack aren't responding, it becomes very, very difficult indeed. So it is a real problem. So what should you do? I mean, the rules haven't really changed. The rules haven't really changed about how vigilant you need to be, how careful you need to be while acting online, but you just need to be a bit more acute. It's often, I think in the time, for, I'll give you an example. My diet has been awful during this whole crisis. I went from eating mainly salads and being very healthy to living on a diet of spaghetti hoops and crisps, which isn't doing me any good, I have to admit, which is a bit embarrassing. It's the same thing. You lose sort of the hygiene of how you would work from day to day. And if you lose your cybersecurity hygiene, it's very, very easy to fall into a trap. Don't think that people are coming after you. The other thing is, and this is, I suppose this is the Zoom effect, be very wary of what sort of software and technology you're using if it's new, not something sanctioned by your organization, not something tested by your organization. Don't just latch onto the next big thing. Think about how it's being used. Think about not fa even how it might affect you even if it's not being used. The thing that most annoyed me about Zoom was the revelation, because I use PCs and Macs, PCs generally for work and for video gaming uh, and Macs for things like shooting this video and for my day-to-day -day stuff. Most of my personal stuff will probably be done on a Mac. The Zoom app, which I did install on my Mac, there are so many problems with it. Initially, there was a, a massive issue that could, it could allow hackers to take over your computer and steal data. There are still concerns that the, the, the app that you download to use Zoom isn't actually fit for purpose. And that's not just, again, I'm picking on Zoom because it's in the news, but that's true of anything new. If you don't do your research and check, you might be in trouble. Now, the thing to do, speak to your security officer if you have one. But often, if you're a smaller organization, you will not have a security officer. So go online, read what the reports are about how that product is used. People are pretty open at the moment. People are quick to jump on a problem with some software with a company. And just do your research, do your due diligence. If you're already using something that's been compromised, for example, suppose you're about to do a load of Zoom meetings today and you're, you've read all the news over the weekend and you think, oh my goodness, is this going to compromise my company? Am I going to have some teenager come on swearing at me midway through? Good chance of that, it seems, at the moment. Um, then by all means, look at an alternative. It's weird that everyone just abandoned Skype. Uh, it's weird that people don't necessarily want to use Microsoft Teams. Look at what the alternatives are, but again, check the security and check, check that it works for your organization. The last thing is, if you are a security officer within an organization, you've been asking for ages for money for, to protect your information security within the business, uh, this is a golden opportunity to ask for some more cash. There may not be, be much money going around, but if you are hacked during this crisis, it's going to be much worse, I think, than if you were hacked at any other time. Response times are going to be more difficult and the law still applies. And as I said at the beginning, the law will not go, well, you know what, it was a crisis, everyone was worried about the virus, therefore the fact you lost 5.8 million people's data records due to a cyber breach will let you off this time. I'm afraid that's not the way it goes. I've often found that after a crisis, uh, the law has a very short memory about how bad things were. So do be careful. Um, I need not say, I hope, that this doesn't just apply to work stuff. So be careful with anything you're doing. I've noticed more and more people posting things online with a lot of personal information. I'm doing one at the moment, if you're friends with me on Facebook, and some of you may well be, uh, showing what my favourite albums are. And of course, before I did that, I checked that none of my passwords refer to names of my favourite albums, that people can't work out what they are. Someone can't look at my Facebook feed, somehow gain access to my bank account, my Twitter account, who knows what else account. So do do be very, very careful. Do think about what you're using. Think back to the DNA companies. Think back to, you may remember, I can't remember the name of the company, the one that was producing the apps where people had big eyes and looked like anime characters, found out they were just keeping all of the data and they have this massive collection of facial, uh, basically faces that they can use for whatever purpose because nobody read the terms and conditions. Do think about it. I mean, if you need a real lesson, think about Facebook. Everyone thought that was the greatest thing ever and now people are very concerned about how it's used, but most people, I hope are using it with a bit, you know, a bit of common sense and realizing that any data that you put online, and this happened, this applies to, to any aspect of your life, is there and it's like releasing it into the wild, letting the genie out of the bottle. And unfortunately, if you're using an insecure app, then you are, anything you put out there is there for someone to take. Someone could be recording your Zoom video feed if, you're, if it's not adequately secure. Um, just be very, very careful.
So I hope that hasn't scared people. I feel like I, I may give everyone nightmares, but hopefully I won't. Now, I did promise everyone was very excited about my record collection, and I'll do this for as long as I'm doing videos. I won't do it on the, the audio podcast because it would make no sense, but as long as I'm doing a video at home, I'll pick some stuff from my record collection to recommend while you're still at home and stuck. So two things, both topical. First one, for Zoom, Father John Misty, his album, not his most recent album, the one before that, Pure Comedy, which I think is, is relevant because it refers to Zoom's, basically Zoom cybersecurity fact, um, protections. They are indeed pure comedy. It's a very good album, by the way. If you like sort of, fairly, if you like sort of 70s Elton John moody version of that, you'll probably like that. The other one, Obviously, one of my favourite albums, David Bowie with Hunky Dory. Reason I picked this is, well, the first track on the album, hopefully after you listen to this video, some of your cybersecurity methods, best practice, and the way that you do business will go through some ch ch, -ch changes Anyway, enough record reviews for this week and enough of that nonsense. Time for some closing thoughts. I can probably summarise everything I've said in this video with just two words. Be vigilant. Be very careful if you're seeing new technology or using new technology and you're not sure. Be careful of how you're using it. Look at what the security considerations are. Do a search online as to what people are worried about and take everything seriously. Don't just take it with a pinch of salt and think, well, if everyone's using it, I'll use it anyway. Now, I'm, I'm a technology lawyer. I work in cybersecurity quite a lot. I have lots of friends who are cybersecurity experts in the, to the end so we get that they can do monitoring, forensics, all of that crazy and cool stuff. I tend to have to deal with the, the mess that comes after the breach all too often. But information is available online. A lot of us post stuff online, a lot of us talk about stuff online. Check it, look at what the issues are and apply this to all aspects of your life. Just also remember that all of the old important things, all of the things you do to protect your data, nothing has changed. You need to carry on doing that. Don't think that all of the cybersecurity threats have gone away because we're all being threatened by a scary virus. The fight against having your data stolen goes on. Let's be honest, it's probably never going to go away, but I guess that's good news for cybersecurity professionals. Uh, at least they will always have a job. So hats, hats off to them. Uh, if I had a hat, I haven't got a hat. Anyway, I want to make sure that all of you do take note of that, but I also want to make sure that you all stay safe. I know it's a scary time right now. I know that a lot of people are in lockdown and I hope that you are all staying sane and finding ways to entertain yourself. Uh, this will hopefully pass sooner rather than later. Certainly at some time I hope I will get out of this massive record dungeon. Actually, eh, there are worse places to be in a lockdown than a massive record dungeon. Even with the neighbours doing lots of hammering here on the, in the apartment next door, just think what will happen later on tonight when I start playing Iron Maiden at excessive volumes. I'm sure that they will, uh, they will enjoy some of that. But anyway, do stay safe, wear a mask, wash your hands, uh, look after yourselves. If you're celebrating Easter, have a good Easter. I will be back very soon. Maybe before Easter, more likely after. It really depends on what sort of exciting things happen. One thing I will say, though, if there are any topics you would like me to cover, anything that you would like me to discuss, uh, by all means, just drop me a line either in the comments section or if I'm post I post this on a, a number of forums, YouTube and LinkedIn, uh, get in touch that way. Or, of course, you can email me, paul.haswell at pinsonmasons.com, and I'd happy to chat about this. Uh, sometimes, you know, you know, it is quite nice to have some human interaction in these troubled times, particularly if you're stuck at home. But anyway, stay safe, everyone. I'll be back very soon.